cities with the same violent problem as homicide spike here in Baltimore. Numbers show we aren't alone on this 11 TV Hill. A top cop fighting the same battle explains what's behind the crime and what they plan on doing to stop it there. Welcome to 11 TV Hill, everyone. I'm Jason Newton. And despite the geography, Baltimore, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, bearing some similarities from their vibrant waterfronts and their historic communities, but also inside of those communities, a dubious likeness centered on violent crime. As of September 17th, Milwaukee police investigated 111 homicides compared to 86 in all of 2014. As of that same date, 238 people have been killed here in Baltimore. That's up from 152 a year ago. Now, on this edition of 11 TV Hill, we talk to those charged with protecting these cities and helping to stop the street level violence. Chief Edward Flynn has led the Milwaukee Police Force for nearly eight years now. And here in Baltimore, interim uh, commissioner Kevin Davis stepped in at a time of, of tumultuous time, let's call it, for a BPD. Unfortunately, Commissioner Davis had an emergency, couldn't make it to today's show, but we are joined now by Director T.J. Smith, also a newcomer, not to Baltimore, but to at least the force. Yes, Thanks sir. for coming by. Absolutely. You come in from Anne Arundel County, and you just walk in face to face with this murder rate. What's the plan now from you and your chief to get the number down? Well, the commissioner is working on several strategies for that instant gratification that we all want. We want the murder to stop. We want them sure. to stop right now. Unfortunately, this national trend, how this is happening, why this is happening, is something that big city chiefs are trying to figure out. He's met with a number of them, and there have been several outside-the-box strategies that have been implemented in Baltimore. And it feels like we're starting to see uh, some of those strategies take hold. As uh, that summer of 2015, the 45 homicides mm -hmm. in July, that was the peak and the top of this triangle. And we've watched in August and now in September those numbers decline. We hope that's a trend in the right direction. To get that trend going, I'm guessing you also have to build some trust within the community. I mean, it's, it's no secret that there's, there's sort of a rift between some communities and police. What are some strategies you can do to build that trust again and, and everyone working together? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the community is needed. We cannot fight this crime problem and have uh, a great city without the community being involved with the crime fight, uh, being partners with the police department. One of the strategies that the commissioner is implementing is a unique strategy that we couldn't find a curriculum across the country, mm. which is about foot patrol. Uh, we hire police officers 23, 24, 25 years old, and we tell them to go out in communities and be community police, walk foot patrol. But we don't really teach them how to engage on foot patrol. Everything doesn't have to be tactical. Mm -hmm. There's a non-tactical foot patrol, which is just walking up and down the street, and you see Miss Jones sitting on her front stoop, and you engage in a conversation. Those days existed mm -hmm. when people knew the officers in their community. Yes, we're busier, but it's time to get back to that, and that's a strategy that's being implemented and developed as we speak to actually have a curriculum so we can teach officers how to do foot patrol as opposed to assuming they know. Is that a tough turn to make? Because right now we're focused on, you know, look, I've seen your pictures, getting guns off the street mm -hmm. and uh, getting violent offenders off the street. Is the time there for police to still make that interaction? And then what, what you get in return from that person that you've met and you've had that eye contact with? The investment is monumental. And it's not even a tangible investment. The investment is, is just monumental. So the time will be there. Okay. The officers are already doing it. It's just understanding better how to do it. Mm -hmm. the, getting here from Anne Arundel County, being a native of Baltimore, seeing how hard these officers work in this city, I'm, I'm even more impressed than I was before I got here. Honestly, I just sure. didn't realize how hard they work and how personal they take it every time something happens in this city that affects the homicide numbers, the violent crime numbers. But one thing that we have to pay attention to is since the unrest in the middle of July till now, we've seen an increase and over about 40 something percent in guns that are seized. Officers are grabbing these guns off of bad guys on street corners in Baltimore. Another part of fighting violence, I think, is, is that face to face meeting with younger folks. I've seen some of the pictures mm -hmm. from the media website, and it's a lot of officers interacting. I think mm -hmm. I saw an officer helping to change a tire, and mm -hmm. another one just mm -hmm. smiling for the camera. Uh, what's that worth to you? Well, believe it or not, citizens want to take pictures with us <laughs> because they want to publicize that they support the police. It, it, it's, it's not this huge riff that people have, uh, think they've seen. Okay. People want to be involved with the police department. Now it's our turn to make sure that we develop those conversations and do it the right way. And honestly, that just makes for a better Baltimore. So those are great pictures that we see. We just had a press conference last week 
talking about the Explorers program, which right. our officers are in schools helping young people from Baltimore City Public Schools go on a path to become Baltimore City police officers. And this is a great program for young high school uh, age kids. What role do body cameras play in helping you to fight crime? And do you think the average officer on the cop wants to be monitored like that on a daily basis? If right now we were able to facilitate rolling out body cameras in the Baltimore Police Department, there would be a line up 83, probably to the Pennsylvania line <laughs> for people waiting to get body cameras. They want people to see what they have to encounter. They want people and they want to protect themselves in instances where the entire story isn't told. So we would see a line up 83 if we were able to give out body cameras from police headquarters. Since April, do you think it's been tough to be proactive for a police officer? Uh, there was some thought that you hold back a little bit because of what they've seen and what mm -hmm. transpired in the, in the Freddie Gray case. Do you feel like that morale is back to the point where they can be proactive mm -hmm. again and, and start to get those guns off the street or stop a violent offender? So I think what we saw post unrest was anxiety levels. Mm -hmm. Again, the average age of a police officer in Baltimore is around 25 to 26. They weren't even uh, of age when the 1992 riots took place. Mm -hmm. So they aren't used to what they saw. So the anxiety level with the community, with the police officers was high. When everybody got their footing back, these officers went right back into the crime fight. We've had several instances in the past couple of months where officers actually caught a murderer on the scene. Mm -hmm. They heard the gunshots, went right to the scene, caught the bad guy, saw the muzzle flash, and caught the bad guy. We, we've had these instances happen. That's not indicative of low morale. That's indicative of co cops trying to fight uh, the, the, the bad pressures that they're, they're hearing and seeing these bad guys on the street. They're not going to let them take over the streets. Some of those bad guys you've seen before, and if, I don't know if you're able to talk a little bit about repeat offenders. I know mm -hmm. the city state's attorney, that was a big thing in the mm -hmm. race for her, that that was a key to stopping violent crime. Mm -hmm. From your standpoint, what's the tough part of, of stopping a, a guy from doing it again? All right, uh, the recidivism rate is high. It, it is uh, a unique group of motivated violent offenders who are committing a lot of this crime in Baltimore. Uh, part of this Be Fed and War Room initiative mm -hmm. is going after an uh, identified number of people who have the profile of we're going to commit crime and we're going to do it no matter what. Mm -hmm. These are highly motivated bad guys and that's who we're trying to keep our eye on and we know that they might try to reoffend. so we're going after them with anything we can. It doesn't have to be that open case that you have, but we know that you're violating crime, we're going to come after you. We did a parole and probation knock and talk on several thousand doors here in Baltimore just a few weeks ago yeah. just to show those offenders that we're working with them, they're working with us, and if you're going to violate the law in Baltimore, we're going to come after you. I appreciate your time, man. Absolutely. Welcome home to Baltimore. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> glad to be back home.